modernize our policy on inward and outward investment and complete a framework for prudential regulation of foreign exposure for institutional investors. We now come to the many tips that uh, Trevor didn't receive, but Praveen did this time. <laughs> South Africans have come to know the tips for Trevor campaign that accompanied the budget every year, introduced by my predecessor, Minister Manuel. The campaign allowed citizens to contribute to the budget process, and I've continued to draw on their advice and sometimes even their humor. We have also used a new form of media such as Facebook, and hundreds of people have used that to communicate their ideas to us. You see, we're modernizing. <clears throat> I would like to thank all of, all of those that took the time to send us the tips, which gave us many new and creative solutions for the future. Resolving the issue of unemployment clearly needs close cooperation between all sectors of society. In Tlantla Saposa of Johannesburg, sees the country standing at an opportune moment. She says government should allocate more money to skills development, and I quote, so that when the real economy grow, economic growth starts kicking in, there will, be at least, there will at least be a sizable pool of much needed skills to draw from. Let's be ahead of the pack this time around, she, he says. <laughs> a young Mr. Mohammed from Gauteng asks whether it will be possible for training centers to be equipped and affiliated with companies to provide, train, provide and train those, I beg your pardon, to provide and train those with, that require hands-on experience. Mr. Mohammed, I agree with you, and I've passed this tip on to Minister Nzimande. Over and above, over and above the actions of government, labor, and the private sector, in addressing the issue of youth unemployment, it is encouraging to see South Africans taking strides in doing what they can provide, in what they can provide answers to. Vuisa Kubaka, a young man from Cape Town, wrote in asking for a larger budget for youth development, focusing on entrepreneurship and job creation. However, he himself is also in the process of developing his own organization, aiming to support youth development through an online platform of social media. I would like to, and I'm sure all of you would like to commend his efforts and wish him every success in launching student enterprises as he calls his enterprise. I'm sure Minister Mgladlana would like to meet him. For this year's campaign, we asked South Africans to send in tips on how government can save money, and many responded with wonderful practical ideas. Sia Bulela, Nguatu from uh, East London calls for close monitoring of projects in municipalities and of the travel costs to conferences that yield no results. His views, his views are echoed by Johan Ace, also from the Western Cape. I suppose they don't have too many conferences, uh, who works for government and so has uh, first-hand experience of where money can be saved. He advises that the system of travel allowances for government officials needs to be reviewed. The review of the ministerial handbook will address the concerns of many citizens, such as Temenkosi Butelezi from KwaZulu-Natal, who calls for the benefits of ministers, their deputies, premiers, and MECs to be reduced. You see, we are a democracy. We will ask, invite anyone to send their ideas to us. <laughs> Sheila Shlakuri from Guguletu, who is in the audience today. Where are you, Sheila? Can we see you? Ah, there she is. <laughs> Wrote in to ask for a review of the child support grant processes to prevent abuse of it. Ms. Shlakuri, I am pleased to announce that government is indeed re reviewing the payment system to reduce fraud and corruption. I'm sure that Minister Mulewa would like to meet you. Advice was again sent through by traditional healer William Makhale of Soweto. 
He had previously submitted a 97-page handwritten tip for the 2009 budget. In 2008, it was 60 pages long. And this year, he has sent a 40-page tip. Let's congratulate him on his stamina anyway. He rightly argues that more public participation in the budget should be encouraged, especially from community organizations, and that community leaders should be trained and skilled so that they can educate their communities and so that communities can build organizations that drive development. I am sure we all agree. <laughs> On the issue of tax, Mr. Len Palmer of Johannesburg cautions that under recovery of revenue should be seen as the biggest threat to this country's stability. He says that this is hampered by the practices of auditors that undertake what he politely calls creative bookkeeping for industry. And I am sure there's no creative bookkeepers in this house today. <laughs> I want to emphasize the importance of paying taxes, supporting the government and, and supporting the country's development. SARS has put in place stringent measures, measures to tighten collections and ensure that nothing slips through the net. But sometimes the net has a lot of holes, you see. Honorable Speaker, I have been given immense support and guidance by President uh, Zuma and Deputy President Motlante, and we thank you for that. They have held... <laughs> they've literally held my hand as I took the first tentative steps as, as a minister in this cabinet. Our cabinet system is one where we take collective responsibility for the policies that our government approves and similarly, we take collective responsibility for our failings as well. And I'm sure that's reassuring for all of us. I would like to thank all of my cabinet colleagues for, for their support and also for the lively engagement on critical issues that face our country. This budget is our collective statement. I am especially indebted to members of the Minister's Committee on the Budget the committee responsible for providing political oversight of the budget process. My colleagues have put in an immense amount of work over and above their normal line responsibilities. We thank you for that. <clears throat> As a newcomer to the executive uh, and indeed to parliament, my colleague, Deputy Minister Nene, has had to show me the ropes as well. He brings a steady hand in a very challenging environment and we want to thank him. He's no longer chair, he's deputy minister now, you see. The MECs of finance have again been generous in sharing their experience and insights and in dealing with difficult challenges this year, both in the provinces and nationally. I wish to express a personal appreciation for their support and dedication to the cause of sound public finances in the provinces. I wish to thank my predecessor and colleague, uh, Minister Manuel, both for the foundation he has laid in managing the fiscus and in the strength of the team that he, uh, he has left behind. <laughs> He's taking one or two of them, but we'll negotiate that. <laughs> <clears throat> Our collective thanks are also due to Governor Jill Marcus, who has approached our task with new ideas and great energy she too has sought to change things, to build on foundations of success, and to do things differently to achieve more. And we wish her well. 